Hey friend, welcome to the Self-Care Isn't Selfish podcast. I'm your host, Emily Nichols. I'm a self-care coach who is on a mission to help you get your body and mind fit through simple and sustainable self-care habits. And I get it. I'm a busy working boy mom who used to feel like a hot mess all the time until I found a solution, my own self-care routine. And friend, I want that for you too. Join us each week to hear attainable self-care tips for all areas of your life from my amazing guests or quickie episodes with me sharing my own experiences and professional wellness knowledge. After each episode, you'll leave with an action plan to start making self-care a priority in your life and get your body and mind fit. So grab a cup of coffee, glass of wine, or your favorite sparkling water, and let's do this. You're listening to episode 76 of the Self Care Isn't Selfish podcast. Hey, we are in the last week of December. I cannot believe it. 2020 is almost over, friends. We can do this. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas with your families. We are actually going to be taking our tree down soon and trying to declutter a little bit more, but I know how challenging it can be leading up to Christmas as a mom because you are doing a lot of things to ensure it's magical for your family. So I hope you've taken the time to take a break for yourself as well. I was laughing last night. I sat down on the couch and Zoe, our oldest dog, and Tyler, my youngest son, both curled up on the couch with me and I just passed out. (laughs) <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. So, hey, we're continuing with the conversation this month on Whole30. As you know, I launched my brand new Whole30 Anytime course. And as it says, you can do this anytime. But I released it right before January, as I know a lot of folks like to do the January Whole30. So as I mentioned on the past couple episodes, I am hosting another webinar this Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. It will be on December 30th. Yes, that's the day. Have you lost track of all days too like me? Yes. <laughs> There's a link in the show notes if you would like to join us. We'll take a deep dive into the whole 30 a little bit more and if it's a good fit for you and what the whole 30 anytime course entails and a couple bonus add-ons you can add on if you need some extra accountability. Um, who this course is for is for the person that needs a little bit more accountability in their lives to complete the whole 30. It's something that maybe you've tried in the past or wanted to, but never were able to complete, or you have done the whole 30 before, but not sure you can do it again. Because maybe it's lost that magic, you know, the first time you do it, you know what I mean? And you need a little extra help to get through it. But maybe just you're someone who's very overwhelmed and tired and exhausted. And you just want to find a way to put yourself first, starting with what you put on your plate and feeling empowered. Then I really, truly believe the whole 30s for you. So there's a link in the show notes as well as you'd like to check out the Anytime course. It's available all year round, but I know a lot of folks are doing it in January. And I'll be continuing to host these webinars every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern moving forward. So if you are thinking about trying out the course, there's more information there for you. So let's get into today's episode. So I work with mostly women as my Whole30 and personal training clients. There is a partner, like a husband, thrown in there every once in a while, too, which is really fun. Um, And my husband, Dustin, kind of helps me with that as well because he can give me a little bit more of a male perspective (laughs) when it comes to their own health and wellness. But I really wanted to focus on moms today and moms doing the Whole30. I've had so many moms that have come to me that felt the way I did five years ago when I first did my first Whole30. You were just overwhelmed and tired and you felt lethargic and you had unhealthy habits that you turned to um, to help deal with stress and anxiety and whatnot. And as I got to thinking about my final Whole30 guest for the month, I knew I needed to have Steph Gorinke on. um, She's a member of the Whole30 team, and I've been able to interact with Steph in a variety of different ways, especially helping out with the Whole Mamas platform. And she just has a really big heart for moms out there and helping them find their own versions of self-care and health and thinking about lifestyle habits to help them be the best version of them. 
So, well, let me tell you a little bit more about Steph because she is a wonderful person. She is the Whole 30s in house dietitian and education manager. She lives in Wisconsin with her husband and two sons. So, she's a boy mama like me. And she really specializes in prenatal and postnatal nutrition, behavioral psychology, and holds additional certifications in perinatal, mental health, and fitness. So Steph has been an advocate of the Whole30 program since 2010, which we talk a little bit about in this episode and how she met Melissa Urban, the co-founder of the Whole30. Um, And she uses the program both personally and professionally with her clients. She's also the co-host of the Dr. Mom podcast. It's an internationally recognized and is an internationally recognized speaker. And Steph is just really committed to building a community of parents who encourage each other and share their own experiences so they know they're not alone and have resources to feel empowered. And I can really speak to that last description of Steph and her career. She's really done a wonderful job of building community of women who are trying to conceive or have conceived, or they are just a mom now and they're just trudging through the trenches. You know what I mean? And she really has a big heart for this. And today we're going to be focused on how you can make the best of your own Whole30 as a mom. This is a really big deal. The first time I decided to do a Whole30, this was a really big form of self-care for me and really started my own self-care journey where I really figured out, oh, hey, it's okay to take time for me. It's okay to take care of myself first and look how much better I feel and how much more I'm able to show up for my kids and my husband because I am showing up for myself first. And as you know, I truly believe that is not selfish. So let's get into today's episode. All right, gang. Thanks so much for tuning back into the Self Care Isn't Selfish podcast. I am so excited for this conversation today. I know a lot of you are going to relate to what we're going to talk about today. So today I have Stephanie Garinke. Steph, so thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, me too. All right. Well, the first question I ask every guest is what does self care mean to you? Yeah, it's a great question. I love this about you that you have a whole podcast about it and making it clear that self-care isn't selfish because more people need to hear that message. So for me, self-care means pouring as much love and thought and care and attention into yourself as you do to other people. And that can look like investing in time alone, even though you feel like you should be with your family. It can look like investing in business pursuits or health related trainings or things that you think you shouldn't be buying for yourself, but make you really happy. Um, Because the more that you can pour into yourself, the more that you can pour back into other people. And the world would just be a much better place, Emily, if more of us were taking that time for ourselves. Yeah. Amen to that. And like you said, it's an investment in yourself, but we're so quick to invest in others just as moms are so nurturing and want to take care of everyone else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's talk about you a little bit more. Can you tell everyone a little bit about your story, kind of where you've been and what you do now? Yeah. So I am a mama of two boys. I have a six-year-old named Otto and a four-year-old named Leo. And we are currently living in Wisconsin. We just talked before the call that we moved here from California, which was a huge move in March, the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, My husband was in the military and recently got out. So this is a huge life change for us, as I'm sure many people can relate to life changes in 2020. So yeah, I am a dietitian. I work for the Whole30 full-time as the in-house dietitian and education manager. And I get the pleasure of working with coaches like you um, and just really spreading the message about the Whole30 and creating resources for the community and working on our DEI-related efforts here at the company uh, to make sure that we're getting this message to as many people as possible. And it's as, as accessible to as many people as possible. And part of that was bringing me on the Whole30 team to create a Whole30 family sector so that we can talk to people who maybe are doing the Whole30 alone or maybe doing the Whole30 that have teenagers in the house or maybe they're pregnant or nursing and they want to do the Whole30 to make sure that they have the resources that they need and the support and community that they need to make that happen. Yeah. 
Well, and I really have to side note here, the whole 30 team has done a really great job pivoting over the past year and a half, I feel feel like really making the resources more accessible and just keeping it more real, you know, like making yeah. like, like how you said with the whole 30 family platform, which we can um, chat about a little bit later too. The whole 30 is just not black and white. Like there are the rules that are black and white, but depending on your circumstances, there's so many gray areas that make it a little bit more challenging than just follow these rules for 30 days and reintroduce. Yeah. Yeah. And I think part of that is just getting that message out there that it isn't easy. I think when the whole 30 first started, the tone was more like tough love, get it done do whatever you need to, but follow the rules. And now we're understanding that it's not as easy as just giving people the program. There is issues with food accessibility and food insecurity and making sure people know that things like frozen uh, vegetables and canned vegetables are okay on the program and and definitely great in, in some circumstances. And looking at how we can make sure that people feel seen and represented when they're getting this information. So I think it's been a huge shift, even looking at how we used to call things compliant versus moving to compatible and how that looks like, you know, we're saying these are the rules and you got to follow them versus here's a plan and see if it works for you. And we really want you to consider these rules, but you, you know, are, are your own person and we don't want to act like we're dictating what you need to do. So we're coming from a place of we're all in this together. Like here is an, a map that we want you to use to see how you can feel better and to really experiment and be your own detective. Yeah. Well, and the team has been so intentional with just changing the language, you know, going from compliant to compatible. It sounds mm-hmm. so more, so much more warm and fuzzy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit easy. yeah. 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 Well, how were you introduced to the whole 30 world, Stephanie? How did you get involved with the whole 30? Yeah, it it goes way back, Emily. I met (laughs) Melissa in 2009, I believe it was, maybe 2008, at a paleo-related conference. And so she was there with Dallas, and they were doing a poster presentation about the Whole30. And I just... I fell in love with her as a person and the idea of the Whole30. And I had come to that conference, actually, I was a vegetarian for a long time and was introduced to the paleo diet through my husband who was going to CrossFit. And so I like did a 180 in terms of my thinking about (laughs) nutrition coming out of dietetic school, like very vegetarian focused. And so, uh, yeah, I met Melissa and we hit it off and I just had been in touch with her as a friend for a long time. And, Then all of a sudden she got pregnant and she had questions for me about her pregnancy. When I got pregnant, I had questions for her. And so she asked me to create Whole30's pregnancy program, which was called Healthy Mama, Happy Baby. And so we, we, I started working for the Whole30 that way. Um, And then I came on the team to do Whole30 families. But my first Whole30 experience was way back in 2009 after hearing about the paleo diet and then all these wonderful additions that the whole 30 provides when it comes to the behavioral changes, when it comes to really working on your relationship with food and working on reintroducing foods and that food freedom piece that was missing from the paleo diet that I really needed to learn and grow. Yeah. I love how stories come together like that. Yeah. Right. Place, yeah, right time. Uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you're so passionate just on, with your podcast, with your Instagram, everything you put out there, you can tell, and I just know personally from working with you, that you definitely have a passion for moms or moms to be and really helping them as far as feeling their best as far as like their diet and their lifestyle and their mindset for that matter. And I know personally speaking for me, when I was expecting my two boys, that was never really discussed with me as far as like, Hey, how are you doing like emotionally yeah. or mentally? What is, what are, how, what are you eating right now? What, what are you planning on eating after, you know, if you're planning on nursing, what's that look like? So where did that passion come from for you as far as helping mamas out there? Yeah. Well, it came partly from that place, Emily, that people aren't given this information and they're left trying to do the research themselves as they are maybe like hovering over the toilet, dealing with morning sickness, or they don't want to think about protein, but they need to know where they're going to get their iron and zinc. Right. And so just having somebody to 
coach you through it and help you know that you're not alone and to offer advice and suggestions without requiring you to be on Dr. Google and figure it out for yourself was something that was really important to me. So as a dietitian, I started out actually in women's health in the preconception period, mostly working with CrossFit athletes that were doing paleo and maybe pushing their body too hard where they were not menstruating or having regular cycles. So that's a population that I started working with a lot of hypothalamic amenorrhea um, and infertility and all of that. And then they got pregnant and this was before I had my kids. So they got pregnant and I did a lot of research and working with pregnant women. And the same questions kept coming up as like, my doctor's not telling me what to do. And I know how important nutrition is and what's the right prenatal. And all of these questions made me really understand that there is a deep need for this education that's out there and education that is a little bit more outside the book of what people are are given with the conventional recommendations. So I, I really explored the area of pregnancy and love that. And again, worked with Melissa to create that pregnancy program, but where my even bigger passion lies right now is in that postpartum period. And that passion is really because of my experience with postpartum anxiety after I had my baby, mm-hmm. my first baby and not being given the resources or the support or the community or the solidarity that this is hard and here's what you can do to help it not be so hard, but it's still going to be hard type of language. So I wanted to know, is there, are there certain foods that I could consume that would help with my healing, but also help with my mental health and my resiliency in this time and help me not eat carbohydrates and sugar all day because I'm so tired and so depleted and so lonely. And how can I get out of that blood sugar roller coaster and that sugar cravings to nourish myself, excuse me, in a way that feels good. So that really, once I got out of that, um, that phase of my life, and it took me a, a year to really break through that cycle of postpartum anxiety. And that was a diagnosis that I actually had to push to get because my providers were saying, you're just new moms experience this and you're going to be fine. Yes. It's a baby blues, like way past two weeks. And we know that the baby blues is defined as staying within those two weeks. And after those two weeks, if you're still experiencing symptoms and you're not feeling like yourself, it's a hundred percent, um, you know, it's a hundred percent okay to ask for help and to see, is there something else going on and not just deal with it? Like we're often told. So, I I really did my education after my first. And then with my second, I put those practices in play and mostly gathered my support team and had people around me because I didn't have that with my first. Um, We were moving with the military and all of that. So yeah, after having those very two different experiences in the postpartum, that's where I can take a stand and say, I know how hard this is and I want to help you. And I feel like I went through that so I can help you go through that in a different way and feel seen and feel heard and actually be able to do something and and have tools. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think most women, especially postpartum, they want to be seen and heard. And it's not just a quick postpartum appointment. Okay. Everything looks good. Baby doing okay. All right. See you in another, you know, year or six months or whatever. And, you know, it's really hard to speak up and advocate for yourself when you don't feel like they're going to be able to help you or support you. And like you said, you're giving them tools to be able to, you know, find the community to be able to, you know, think about the way they're eating and think about the way, the way they're eating is affecting their emotions and everything else going on when you're having a baby. It's such an emotional and physical roller coaster for that matter. So that's just amazing that you're doing that for women. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I just, I want to be the person that I was looking for so desperately when I was, I was struggling. And now luckily, you know, from the time that I had my first to now, I feel like there's a lot more awareness about postpartum mental health and more people are raising their hand and saying, I have it, or I had it. And there's just, there is a lot more attention. 
And it's still something that we're not given a whole lot of tools when it comes to nutrition or what are some supplements or what are some labs to get done or what are some herbs that can support you. Um, and yeah, also that best friendness of, you know, you're not alone, I think is so, so important in that postpartum period. And like we were talking about with pregnancy, you're actually getting a lot more touch during pregnancy with your weekly visits. And there is more books about it and resources about prenatal nutrition. Postpartum, I mean, really it's about baby after that postpartum period in providers' eyes. And I want to change that dynamic in the world and offer something different. Hey gang, cutting in on this conversation real quick to tell you about my favorite headbands from Maven Thread. You know, as a fitness instructor, I've tried, I think, every headband out there. Maven Thread is my favorite. It doesn't squeeze my head real tight. It doesn't slip while I'm teaching or taking a workout class myself. And best of all, they are so cute. So many different pretty patterns and colors. And I think I have one for every season of the year as well. So head over to maventhread.com and you can use the code EMILYNICHOLS22 to save 15% off your first order. And hey, while you're there, check out their other workout apparel. They have so much more than just headbands. So head over to maventhread.com and use the code EMILYNICHOLS22 to save 15% off of your order. And hey, tag me on Instagram at EMILYNICHOLS22 so I can see you looking super cute during your workouts in your Maven Thread headband. Yeah, you're for sure doing that. I love that so much. So, okay, I want to talk a little bit about the Whole30. I work with mostly, I work with all women. Every once in a while, there's a husband thrown in there with one of their partners or whatnot. Um, And I really, when I have a new client come on, doing the Whole30 is a very big deal for them. It's it's really a huge form of self-care personally for them. And sometimes they feel really guilty or they feel like it's really hard to do this because of all the other factors going on in their lives like we talked about So for, you know, we're recording this right before the January Whole30. It's when a lot of folks like to do the Whole30 at the beginning of a new year. Um, What would be your biggest piece of advice for that woman, that mom that's wanting to take on the Whole30, but she's just not sure if she can do it? Yes, I would say my number one tip would be unapologetic be unapologetic about you doing it. And I say that because like you mentioned, I think we know that it will be good for us. And we're so excited about what this means. And we prepare to do it. We get, we order our things from Thrive Market and we meal prep and we have a first good couple of days and then it starts getting hard. Right. And then all the dishes start piling up or our partner is like, Hey, let's order pizza this first weekend of your whole 30 or the kids are driving you crazy and you are just trying to reach for something to feel better. And it can, it can start to feel very, very difficult. And just like we talked about with the postpartum experience, understanding that it's not easy to do this, like you said, but you can do it. And the one of the biggest things that I don't think is often talked about when it comes to the whole 30 is absolutely can change your life in, in the form of how it changes your physical health and your mental health. But that resiliency and that self-efficacy for moms is huge for you to be able to say at the end of the 30 days that I did this. And if I can do this, I can do anything just like that. You know, that feeling once, you know, you have that baby and you're like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe I did this. And you look at your baby and you're like, how did this fit in me? Like, how did I do this? I created this miracle, right? You do the whole 30 and you get to the end of it and you finish something. It's so important that you finish something and to not feel bad. If you're the only person in the house eating a certain way to not push it on other people in the house that may not be ready or willing to do it, do it for you. Because if you do it for you, you're going to get that self-efficacy. And sometimes not every time people in your household will observe all the wonderful changes that you're getting and they'll want to jump on board. And Mm -hmm. that's such an an easier way for you to get the family on board is by leading by example, like we talk about with the whole 30, but yeah, Emily, that, that resiliency piece, and then also finding ways to make it easier on yourself as a mom. So I think sometimes we do the whole 30 and we're doing it without the support of our partner, but we're like, well, okay. They really like, rice. So like, I don't know how to juggle this. Cool. 
make rice on the side and have your meal and then they can scoop up that rice Mm -hmm. or, oh, okay, my kids really like cheese. Awesome. Have cheese for them. They can sprinkle it on top of whatever you're making and be good to go. So we're, there's a Whole30 HQ, we're doing a Whole30 recipes takeover. And that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I don't know when this goes live, but we're, um, we're going to be doing the recipe takeover, I believe, the last week of December, the first week of January. Um, I'm sure we'll save that to the highlights on Whole30 recipe, but that's what I'm sharing is, you know, a one meal mul- multiple ways method. That way you're not stuck making three different meals to please everybody's appetite. You make a healthy meal add the side dishes that you know that they're going to miss out on and, and keep it easy. Well, Steph, you are known for your ingredient meals and you are speaking my language because every new Whole30 client that I bring on, I share a lot of really simple recipes that I've Googled over the years when starting my own Whole30 journey. And I'm like, look, these are nice little recipes, but these are the most simple recipes you could do. Like when I meal prep, I do I roast a bunch of veggies and some meat, and then I just have it throughout the week to kind of piece together as I'm going along because I am not a recipe developer. I do not measure things. I just throw it all in a bowl and I call it done and it's delicious. Put some of that new secret sauce on it. Oh my gosh. And it's good, but you're really known for that. And like you said, it's one of the things that um, I think we get caught up with, with the whole 30, you see all these amazing recipes. And like you said, as a mom, you need to keep it really easy. So you're really well known for that. So we'll make sure people follow the highlights for that. Yeah. That was something that I was embarrassed about for the longest time because I'm like, I'm like, people see me as a dietitian. I feel like people have this idea that I'm a food blogger too, and a recipe creative and all that. So I hid that for a really long time. And people are like, well, how do you eat to stay consistent? And I'm like, it's not that exciting. Like I just make a bunch of protein, like you said, and use pre-made condiments, like all of the amazing whole 30 approved brands we have, have made it even easier on us. Like if you're on a budget, make your own, but if you have the ability to purchase new primal or, um, primal kitchens or Tessie Mays, like they make your job so much easier. So I hid that. And then I started sharing it and people are like, well, how do you do this? And so it really led to this ingredient meal, like hashtag ingredient meal you can find on Instagram of throwing together whatever you have in your kitchen and having it taste good because you're using good ingredients and you're using those sauces to really make things flavorful. And that's the only way that I stay consistent. There are weeks where I'm like, I think I'm going to have a recipe week where I'm going to make a bunch of recipes and nine times out of 10 that fails on me. And I just go back to what we have available and throwing chicken breasts in a slow cooker and shredding that and then pouring maybe barbecue sauce one night and maybe pesto sauce the other night, or maybe that secret sauce or ranch that's already made for me another night. You have four different types of chicken just from making a one ingredient meal, which is that chicken in the crock pot, Mm -hmm. um, or having hard boiled eggs ready, have those as a snack, just on their own, mix it with mayo for a egg salad, like have it chopped on your salad for another type of protein meal. I think we overthink it. And I see this time and time again with whole 30 years where they're super excited to start and they bought four cookbooks and they have saved a bunch of things on Instagram. And they're so excited to make all these meals and they do it for the first week. And then the second week comes and there's just this cloud and this weight over them of like, oh my gosh, I've got to spend four hours in the kitchen again this weekend for the next week. And it's really making their life so much more difficult than it needs to be. And I have friends, Emily, that are food bloggers. And I think we also see food bloggers as, oh, they're probably making recipes all the time in their kitchen. And they probably have beautiful breakfasts and lunch and dinners. And we're seeing their highlight reel on Instagram. And even food bloggers that love to be in the kitchen, they do baked chicken thighs, yeah. for dinner. They do simple meals too. So don't put your, the, put the pressure on yourself to have something that's Instagram worthy all of the time. And I would honestly recommend showing those simple meals so that people can see that this is accessible and bring them to see those life-changing results that you're seeing. Yeah. Like you said, you get to the point where it's too overwhelming prepping. It's too, it's just mm-hmm. not sustainable long-term. I, I mean, 
I think two of the biggest lessons I learned from doing the whole 30, I did my first one back in 2015. Number one was kind of like what you said, how empowered I felt at the end. Like I was on fire for life. I'm like, I just completed something for 30 days. Bring it on. What else can I do now? And it it snowballed into so many other areas of my life, just feeling like I can do hard things. But second was learning how to really cook meals, but keep it so simple and to prep in a way that it was, it wasn't overwhelming because I was that person. I bought these little meal prep containers <laughs> off Amazon. I like did a big post with all of my meal prep containers laid out with all of my meals curated for the week. I was like, my husband and I are going to eat these during our whole 30. And then like halfway in, I'm like, oh, I'm so sick of these meal prep containers and doing this and doing that. And I found ways to make it easy on myself, but it does take time to figure out that rhythm and flow as far as what's going to work with your family. But it was a really big relevation for me and something that's made my life a lot easier. And now when my kids ask, okay, what's for dinner? It's, it's not so much like, oh my gosh, I'm like, well, we got this and this, let's just piece it together and figure it out and eat and move on. Yeah. And I think learning that is so important too, because as we talk about with the whole 30, it's not just this thing you do for 30 days. And then you go back to ordering takeout every night and popping in a frozen pizza. It's like the whole 30 is a start of this beautiful new relationship you have with food and understanding of your body. And we want it to be something you can continue long-term, not just bang out a bunch of awesome recipes over four weeks. Yeah. So I feel like this ingredient meal method has also empowered my husband in eating healthy too, because I feel like this is a common thread, but I open up the refrigerator in the pantry and I'm like, okay, cool. I've got that shredded chicken and I've got this cool sauce and I've got these frozen vegetables. Like I can make a meal. Um, my husband opens up the refrigerator and he's like, nothing's there, right? Like that's how he used to be. He's, and there's so much food, but nothing's already prepared. So he's like, I just, I'm going to have this frozen pizza. Yes. So me doing these ingredient meals has helped him kind of think through how to prepare meals a little bit better on his own. So he can feel empowered in the kitchen. Um, he usually doesn't cook. I'm the cook, but when he does come down for lunch and we're all working at home now, he knows how to piece things together. And same thing with my kids. So on that ingredient meal template, there's a protein, a source of produce and a healthy fat. That's the three tiers of the ingredient meal. So whatever you want, if you're vegetarian, or a vegan, like your protein source can look very different than somebody that is eating animal protein, right? So it's very uh, doable for all sorts of diet preferences. So my kids know when they're sitting down to a snack, like they know to do a protein uh, source of fruit or vegetable, which is usually a fruit to be honest with you, and then some kind of fat. So usually that apple that they're grabbing, they're grabbing a almond butter packet with it, or they're grabbing hard boiled eggs with maybe some carrot sticks. Like they just intuitively know how to do it. So it's something that, yeah, it seems so simple, but it helps you in so many areas of your life, make fast meals, save money and be consistent. Yeah. I think women don't give themselves enough credit for how much of a leader we are in our families and how much everyone is watching you. Like my kids, like I remember after doing a couple rounds of Whole30, they would be like, oh, mom, that cheese is not like Whole30, right? Or this is not Whole30. And seeing them now, my boys are 12 and nine, like they make healthier choices and they want to be active for that, Mm -hmm. for that matter. So like you said, we, we talked last week on the podcast um, with Julie Freed and she made a good point. Like you shouldn't should people like, Oh, you should be eating this way or you should be doing that way. Just lead by example and they'll follow. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're watching, even though you don't think they are, they're watching a lot, even at young ages. (laughs) So yeah, for better or worse at times, (laughs) but yeah. Well, I want to talk about the new Whole30 family platforms because once it went live, I dug into it and I went down a deep rabbit hole like, (laughs) this is amazing. And I'm sharing it with all my new clients coming on for the January Whole30. Can you explain the platform a little bit more and take a deep dive into um, how this platform could help someone doing the Whole30? Yeah. Well, thank you for saying that. It definitely has been a work in progress for a really long time. So what we wanted to do with Whole30 Families is share information that can apply to you through many seasons of your life. And we have resources to help you through 
questions or concerns you may have in the preconception period and how a Whole30 could help you in that preconception period. We have resources for pregnancy. Is it safe to do a Whole30 during pregnancy? How does a Whole30 change if you are doing it while pregnant? Uh, we have resources for nursing because a lot of questions that we get are related to, I want to do this, but I'm nursing and I've heard that it might tank milk supply. So how can I make sure that I keep a resilient milk supply? So we have blogs and resources resources about that as well. And then we even extend to, okay, my teenager wants to do this, but the conversations with doing it with a teenager are very different than doing it with a four-year-old. So how do I approach that? Or my grandparent, my kid's grandparents really like sweets and we're trying to reduce sugar intake. So how do we have those kinds of conversations? So really we go the spectrum and we're continually adding resources to help with that. We also are talking about, um, inclusion and diversity and equity when it comes to families. So how do you approach situations where you're going to your family's house and you are on a whole 30 or you are figuring out your food freedom and there are some really culturally important foods that are there and how do you have those tough discussions about, no, I'm not gonna eat that dish that we normally have every year for Christmas, that's really important. Or do you actually just really plan not to do a Whole30 because that's so important to you? So figuring out how to have tricky discussions with family around food, because food is so intimate and personal, and we've got to take caution when we're having those conversations with others, especially, you know, thinking about the holidays, you're sitting down to a meal, like that's not the time to be having a conversation about whether dairy is inflammatory or not, right? It's the time to be enjoying that meal with your family. Yeah. Yeah. So we have lots of resources like that. We also have that ingredient meal section, like we were talking about where you can click which protein you have or which vegetable you have, and it'll generate recipes that are so simple. Usually five ingredients are, are less there. And yeah, it's just a, a one-stop shop to go for all your family related information. And if there's anybody that's listening that has a question about Whole30 and families, let us know. And we are always happy to create blogs around that. Yeah. I feel like the whole 30 is ever evolving and the mm -hmm. whole team is so open to feedback and being like, oh, well, I didn't think of it this way. We should mm -hmm. really think about, you know, oh, if this dish is really culturally going to be um, offensive to grandma, if you don't eat it, maybe you should just do a whole 30 at that time. We're really just being intentional, like you said, because food is intimate and emotional at times and having those scenarios set up so you can have that conversation or not have that conversation is really important for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We're really about thinking through different perspectives on things as well. So like that holiday holiday post, we could have just said, here's how you handle that situation. But we wanted to hear from five different people that have different experiences and different you know, ways they would go about answering that share so that you can maybe find something that fits for you, because again, we're not dictating what you should or shouldn't do with your nutrition and how you approach these events. It's just, okay, here are a couple of suggestions and here's, you know, you, you are now empowered and informed so you can make a decision. Yeah. Well, there's definitely a lot of great areas with the whole 30, depending on where you're coming from, but I feel like the mm -hmm. team has done a really great job of providing a few different scenarios. At least people get thinking about how they would approach a situation like that. So kudos to you all for sure. Yeah, well, it's really it thanks to coaches like you, Emily, and the community that is helping us see these blind spots that we hadn't seen in in years and doing better. So, you know, when you you know better, you can do better, right? So that's what we're working on. Yeah. Steph, I have loved this conversation with you so much. I could keep talking and talking to you, but I'll be respectful of your time. Where can everyone connect with you and follow you online? Yeah. So I'm on Instagram at Steph Gurinke. So my last name is G-R-E-U-N-K-E. And StephGurinke.com is my website. I do some private consulting there. And I am the host of the Dr. Mom podcast too. So it's a podcast that I do with a best friend of mine. She's a naturopathic doctor who specializes in pediatrics. And she's got two little ones as well. So we have conversations every week about things related to motherhood uh, from a doctor and a dietitian's perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's on my weekly subscribed podcast. Oh, so I love you. listening to your show as well. Make sure to include a link in the show notes for everyone to connect with you. But Steph, thanks so much for this conversation. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for having me and happy holidays and new year. 
Thank you so much, Steph, for this conversation. I always love getting to catch up with you and you are just doing amazing things. Thank you so much for sharing your heart with us. You know, of all the interactions I've ever had with Steph, she always leads with empathy and I just really admire that about her and really see her as um, a mentor to me, whether she realizes that or not. So Steph, again, thank you so much for um, having this conversation with me. So as always, let's talk Talk about my three biggest takeaways from this conversation with our guest, Steph Gorinke. Like we mentioned at the beginning of our conversation, the whole 30, you know, there are the black and white rules, you know, not eating this, 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 you know, not stepping on the scale for 30 days. But there are so many gray areas, especially when it comes to being a mom and a few different roadblocks or challenges that, um, come up that maybe aren't really addressed. And so I know with the new Whole30 Family platform online, that's a really great way to um, be able to think about how to overcome those roadblocks or those hurdles you may need to jump over as being a mom. But listen, I know this is a really big deal to take on something like the Whole30. It's a major form of self-care. And I just want to encourage you to give it a shot. You can hop on one of my webinars or try out the Whole30 Anytime course, anytime again, (laughs) Um, to really, you know, give yourself a little added sense of accountability and really do something to put yourself first, mama, because you deserve it. Okay, here's my three biggest takeaways. So number one, moms really do set the example. As Steph and I talked about, your kiddos are watching. They are watching. So why not lead by example? You know, your kids will end up making healthy choices over time just by watching what you're doing. Like Steph mentioned, you know, if you're making a meal for your kids and they wanted to add some shredded cheese or you want to have a side of rice for them, great do that but they're going to be able to watch what you're doing and seeing how not only physically how you'll change by doing the whole 30 but mentally you feel more light mentally and emotionally and you're able to be more patient for your kids by making these healthy choices they'll see you want to start moving your body and that you're listening to podcasts like this or books or surrounding yourself with positive people that's just the avalanche effect the snowball effect i've talked about so many times with the whole 30 you know it For me personally, since 2015, it's just had this snowball effect in my life where I'm trying to live my life to the fullest for not only me, but for my family as well. But your kids will see that as well. They'll be part of that snowball effect and that will just continue on from there. So remember, you are setting the example and your kiddos are watching. Number two, keep it simple. Ugh keep it so simple. I love how Steph does her ingredient meals. It's so simple and it really helped me turn a corner after doing a couple of whole thirties. And like I mentioned in the episode, all of the meal prepping I was doing, it was too much for me. It wasn't sustainable long-term. And it took some practice in figuring out what was going to work best for my schedule and my own sanity (laughs) for that matter. But keep it simple. You can can start as something as easy as ingredient meals. Within my Whole30 Anytime course, I share five days of meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for Whole30 meals and simple recipes and grocery lists. And these are the most simple recipes ever. Like you can just get the ingredients and throw it all together because that's, like I mentioned, I am not a recipe creator, but that's one of the easier ways to make your life a little bit more simple during your Whole30, okay? Just with those ingredient meals. And like Steph said, make sure you head over to Whole30 Recipes on Instagram. She'll be sharing some of her ingredient meal examples and you can click the link in the show notes for that or even go follow her on Instagram to see some of the ingredient meals she has put together over time. But just keep it so simple. I love her ingredient meals and it really truly speaks to my heart and keeping it super, super simple. And number three, I've talked about this on the podcast before, and I'm so glad Steph brought it up as well. The Whole30 will teach you resilience. It will teach you resiliency. If you can do this, if you can stick to the Whole30 for 30 days, you can do anything. I guarantee it. I Garen freaking did, okay? And I'm speaking from my own personal knowledge, seeing the light bulb go off in my clients and to see them take off with that momentum, to feel empowered. 
to feel empowered, to see something from the start to finish, and to feel that sense of accomplishment, to feel so much better, to have that physical, mental weight lifted off of you. You guys, it's just, I I can't even describe, I can't describe it. It's going to change your life if you just give yourself the chance to give yourself 30 days of the whole 30 and watch what it does from there. Will it completely change your life in 30 days? Maybe not, but it's definitely going to give you that momentum, that confidence, and that resiliency that Steph mentioned that's just going to have that amazing snowball effect, not only in your life, but in your family's life as well. So gang, like I mentioned, doing the Whole30, especially as a mom, is a really big deal. It's a big deal. It's a very high form of self-care. It is challenging. There's hurdles you're going to be jumping over, and that's where I'm here to help as a Whole30 certified coach and to help you through my Whole30 Anytime course. So click the link in the show notes if you'd like to check out the course. I have a couple of add-on options like Zoom, texting, or you can join me for my Whole30 webinar every Wednesday at 8 p.m. The next one's this Wednesday, the 30th, and we can take a deep dive into the Whole30 and see if it's a good fit for you or not. And go give me a follow on Instagram, and you can tag Steph Gurinke as well. She's linked in the show notes. You can follow me at emilynichols22. Let us know what you loved about this episode, what you learned, and I can't wait to see you within my Whole30 Anytime course. So sending you all lots of love as we are going into 2021, continuing with the theme of making self-care not selfish, making yourself a priority, and loving on yourself and your family from there. All right, gang, happy early new year. I will see you in 2021.